And that's how that turned out. Yeah, yeah, that's is good. Now, uh, tell me about your meltdowns. Meltdowns? I don't believe I've had any. Nine? No, zero. Not nine. Uh, are you sure? Well, I think so. Wait, can I be autistic if I don't have meltdowns? Hello and welcome to another episode of Autism Files. My name is Shay and I make weekly videos about autism. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button for more autism content. I publish new videos every Wednesday. Hit the notification bell to not miss a single one. As the intro implied, we're going to talk about autistic meltdowns today. Perhaps you've heard the term in movies or TV shows with autistic characters. If you know anyone with an autistic child, you may even have witnessed one. But what is a meltdown exactly? Is that like a temper tantrum? No. Tantrums and meltdowns may sometimes look the same, but they are fundamentally different. An autistic meltdown is defined as Autistic meltdown, an intense response to an overwhelming situation. The main difference between the two is that a tantrum is voluntary and a meltdown is involuntary. A child having a tantrum knows what they're doing. They're attempting to get their way and they're in control. A child having a meltdown, on the other hand, is not attempting to get their way or attempting to do anything else for that matter. It is involuntary and they are not in control. Sometimes a meltdown can be the result of sensory overload. Sometimes it can be the result of information overload. And sometimes it's emotional overload that's the cause. Either way, the person becomes overwhelmed and that is what causes the meltdown. Do you want to go for a walk? Let's go for a walk. When I used to work with autistic kids back in Pittsburgh, I witnessed many meltdowns. The key is to separate them from that which is overwhelming them. As Dan from the Aspie world would say, let them have a time out. A neurotypical child having a tantrum would likely not respond well to a time out. But for an autistic child, Escaping to a quiet place to calm down is often very effective. And this is true for autistic adults as well, for it's not just the kids who have meltdowns. Adults can have them too. But not all autistic people have meltdowns. Some don't. Some of us instead have what is called a shutdown. That's like a quieter version of a meltdown. I've read it described as being like a computer shutting itself down to avoid overheating. Basically, the person kind of just zoned out for a while. Um, they might escape to a quiet place, um, cry quietly. Um, if you're a science fiction fan, a nerdier analogy would be like shutting down all systems on your spaceship except life support. Um, I believe I've probably had a good number of shutdowns in my life. That's Perhaps for another video, though. But what about me? Have I really never had a meltdown? Well, maybe, but maybe not. The truth is, I'm just not sure. I do recall having tantrums as a child, but were they really tantrums or were they meltdowns? Unfortunately, I can't remember them in any kind of detail. I don't recall what they were about, how they started, or how they ended. There was, however, one incident when I was 13 that I remember well enough to say that it might have been a meltdown. See, when I was 12, I discovered MTV. 
it wasn't even the music that caught my attention at first. It was my love of maps. They were having this thing called a muck in America. They traveled across the country, seeing different towns and talking to different people. I didn't even really care about the interviews. I just loved the big map they had where they showed each place they stopped. It was MTV VJ Alan Hunter who was doing all of this, if I recall correctly. Anyway, eventually I did start watching the music videos. Anyone else out there old enough to remember that? When MTV actually played music videos? My first favorite band from watching MTV was Bon Jovi. They had recently released an album called Slippery When Wet. The first single was called You Give Love a Bad Name. Now, I'm 12. I know nothing about love. Never had a girlfriend. Never even wanted one at that point. But there was something about that song I really liked. Um, I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, it appealed to me somehow. It wasn't long, of course, before I had the cassette tape. Remember those? Before we had CDs, we had cassette tapes. So one day, I lost my Bon Jovi tape. That started what might have legitimately been a meltdown. First, I tore up my room looking for it. Then I went into the living room. I moved furniture. I tossed aside couch cushions. I cried. I yelled at my mom as if she were responsible for keeping track of my stuff. Huh. Here it is. Turned into a CD, though. Weird. Anyway, I don't remember every detail of that incident, but I do remember feeling really upset. I think in my case, it was an emotional overload. I was feeling the loss of something that was really important to me, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I took it out on my mom, which is something I would normally never do. Uh, to yell at her like that was not like me at all. To this day, I feel really bad about it, but I don't think I was in control of myself at the time. All right, so those of you in the autism community, what do you think? Was that a meltdown or more of a tantrum? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. So you see, mein Herr, you may have very well had a meltdown after all. I guess you're right, Doc. I just never thought of that as being a meltdown. But it really sounds like it was. Now, let me tell you about my shutdowns. We'll get back to him in a future video. That's all the time we have this week for Autism Files. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this topic or just the video in general. I'm an Autism File, and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.